The best ghost stories feel so real, so believable, and so utterly chilling that they virtually guarantee you at least one night, if not more, spent tossing and turning while listening for creaking floors and the sound of ghostly moaning. Of course, that is the paradox inherent in ghost stories. So, in today's video, we will be talking about 10 terrifyingly true scary stories. Without further ado, let's begin. The Little Hands I've never lived in a haunted house, but my mother did as a teen, writes reddit.com user patented spacehook, recounting a true event. Other houses on her street had strange things going on too. A few homes away from her lived a family. One night, the daughter went to bed with a bad headache. The next day, she was dead. She'd passed away from an aneurysm. After her funeral, the family went away to get their minds off the tragedy, and the father asked my uncle, my mom's brother, to check on their pets. My mom and dad, who were dating at the time, went with him. My mother had heard there was a grand piano and she wanted to play it. My dad was studying to be a veterinarian. After entering the house, my uncle and my father headed to the basement to see the animals and my mother went to the piano on the ground floor. She was playing it when she felt something brush her ankles. She thought a cat must have left the basement and walked past her. She kept playing, and then she felt it again. She looked under the piano and saw nothing. When she started again, she felt hands clasp her legs tightly. She dashed to the basement door, called my uncle and father, and waited for them. Back outside, my uncle could tell my mom was rattled and asked what was wrong. She told him what had happened, and he turned white. He told her that the daughter who had died used to play a game with her father. When he played the piano, she crawled underneath, grabbed his ankles, and pushed his feet up and down on the pedals. The Phantom Patient The ambulance company that I used to work for had a haunted ambulance, Rig 12, recounts reddit.com user Zerbo. A lot of EMTs had stories about it, but I never put much stock in paranormal stuff. That is, until I had my own experience with Rig 12. My partner and I were working in a rural community at 3 a.m., and it was pitch dark and completely quiet. We were both dozing. I was in the driver's seat, and she was in the passenger seat. I woke up to a muffled voice, but I thought my partner was talking. I told her I was trying to sleep and closed my eyes. I distinctly heard a male voice say, Oh my God, am I dying? Followed by a few seconds of heavy breathing. My partner and I sat up straight and looked back into the patient compartment where it sounded like the voice had come from. Things were quiet for a couple of seconds. Then we heard the click of the oxygen bottle regulator and a hiss as if it was leaking. I turned on the light and we ran out of the rig. I thought a transient might have climbed in while we were asleep, so we opened the rear doors. No one was there. I checked the oxygen bottles, neither was open. We didn't sleep much after that. The Impish Ghost My neighbor Diane and I had a playful poltergeist for years, and we called it Billy. So begins reddit.com user Abby's underscore alibi in their real-life ghost story. I'd come home to find something in a weird place, milk in a cupboard, toilet paper in the fridge, laundry detergent in the bathtub. Diane once called to ask if Billy had been around because she couldn't find a gallon of milk. We finally found it outside of her back step and sugar, darn sugar. Every morning, my sugar bowl was empty. When I'd had enough, I would point to Diane's home and yell, go see Diane. Within five minutes, I'd get a call from her. Thanks a lot, she'd say. He'd gone and pulled shenanigans at her place. This occurred for the entire two years we lived there. No one believed us, not even our husbands. My mother thought someone was stealing from us when we were sleeping or out of the house. My sister believed something was going on, but didn't know what. I still can't explain any of it. The Red Lady of Huntington College Here's a story that dates back to 1910 but almost any student at Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama should recognize it. 
That's because the events that led up to it are said to have actually happened. As the story goes, in 1910, a young woman who was new to the school was known for her love of the color red. Sadly, she was also known for being strange and a loner. As the first term got underway, the young woman grew increasingly isolated. Eventually, she took her life by slashing her wrists. Her body was discovered in a red gown, drenched in blood. From then on, students and faculty have been reporting sightings of a young woman dressed in all red. She appeared all around the college's campus. The figure, dwelling in perpetual isolation, is often cited as a reminder of the importance of being kind to one's peers. The Ghost of Frederick Jordan This real-life ghost story concerns a man named Frederick Jordan, who held one of the most lonely and desolate jobs in existence. Jordan was a lighthouse keeper for Penfield Reef Lighthouse off the coast of Fairfield, Connecticut. Built in 1874, the lighthouse was primarily a way of warning ships of a treacherous, hidden reef responsible for more than its fair share of harbor accidents. In 1916, Frederick Jordan was the head lighthouse keeper. Tragically, he drowned in a boating accident just before Christmas 1916, when he was caught in a gale while rowing home to see his family. Ever since then, lighting and equipment malfunctions in the lighthouse have been blamed on Jordan's spiritual presence. But even more chilling is that keepers of the Penfield Reef Lighthouse often find the lighthouse logbook open to the day Jordan died. And locals have recounted witnessing an unidentifiable figure appearing on the water to help stray boats find their way to safety near the reef. The Ghost of the Hanged Man One theme that many ghost stories have in common is that they offer a sense of justice in return for a wrongful death. This particular ghost story, however, offers a somewhat different take. It's about wrongful treatment and death and revenge in the afterlife. On October 13, 1877, Robert Schmell was hanged after a trial that found him guilty of a terrifying and inexplicable murder spree. The townspeople were filled with so much anger and hatred that they left his body hanging for days. As the tale goes, not one of the townspeople demonstrated even a shred of remorse, let alone forgiveness. Since then, Schmael has been said to haunt the town. Those who have seen him say that he appears as a ghostly male figure, but as soon as the figure registers in your mind, it disappears, somewhat maddeningly, into the darkness. So guys, let me know down in the comments section below which one of the stories was the scariest. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.